TikTok dancers. They got the moves. But how about those cameramen? Can't believe how they can follow so well. No, actually, um, it's the editors. Oh, really? Jay, teach us. Let's just get it out of the way, right up here at the top. I, I know, okay? I've got it. Jay! Why are you teaching us editing? Why are you not doing TikTok dancing? Oh man, I'm such a dad. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry you guys had to see that. Look, I wanted to teach you how to do this effect. I wanted to show you as an editor how I would tackle this problem. I saw this effect a while back on TikTok and I instantly was just like, oh, this is cool. I gotta figure out how to do this. And as much as I would love to have showed you someone who knows how to dance, well, you got me. And I'm sorry you had to see it. Unfortunately, you're gonna have to see it again so I can show you guys how to do it, but you know, cut me some slack, okay? It's fine, it's fine. Right out of the gates. I know you guys are wondering, you know, what, what is the best way to tackle this? Jake, what do you use? And as your resident Final Cut and DaVinci Resolve expert, I can confidently say that this effect is really easy to do automatically in DaVinci Resolve. The manual way of doing it in Final Cut though isn't terrible, it's just not nearly as fast as doing it in DaVinci. But I'm gonna try to speed run and show you both ways. Okay, so real quick speed round, let's show you how I would do this manually in Final Cut. So let's drag our dancing clip, um, let's turn the audio down, and let's just pretend that we are starting from, here. Let's, this is a great little spot, head bobbin. So to tackle this effect in Final Cut manually, what I would do, is I would go up here to the top right corner of the viewer and hit the little drop down and then make sure to show horizon. Once you click that, you should get big yellow crosshairs. You can't miss them. And then at that point, again, it's relatively straightforward. I go to the start of my clip. I click the transform button, make sure to go up to the inspector on the right side and just hit a keyframe on position and scale to start this whole manual process. Now, because we have transform selected, we are able to move and create keyframes frame by frame in Final Cut. So in this instance, I'm gonna put the crosshair kind of right on my chin, I think makes sense. Um, we are going to scale up, of course, so that it fits in the frame. Now, clicking through frame by frame, you just need to click and drag and each keyframe, you know, go a few keyframes, two, three at a time, and just keep moving that crosshair so that it stays right there on the chin or whichever spot you've selected. Pretty straightforward to do. It's just tedious, right? I'm doing a lot of clicking. I'm going through a lot of frames. It's just kind of obnoxiously tedious. But now that we've done that for this little section of clip, let's turn off transform. Let's turn off show horizon and let's play this back. Yeah, right out of the gates, this was very effective. Looks great, but our dark wizards over at Blackmagic have created a way in Fusion to do everything I just did completely automatically, and I'm gonna show you guys that now because again, it's just badass. All right, so we've opened up DaVinci, we are here. Let's try to find that same spot. Um, let's see looking for head bobbing. I'm gonna make this clip even longer because you can do more faster, which is the beauty of it. Now that we've got our clip selected, let's hit one of my favorite hotkeys, R. And if you're new around here, hotkey R takes me to the Fusion page. As much as I love going down here and clicking between the different buttons, I'd rather just hit one button and go there without having to think about it. You should definitely have a hotkey to go to Fusion. And from here, it feels kind of complicated, but again, just follow these steps. It's pretty easy once you get the hang of it. And again, once you get the hang of it, it's fast and you can do this all the time and it happens automatically. So make sure our clip node is selected, hit shift plus space. This opens up our select tool and we are searching for planar tracker. 
Now again, this one's a little daunting. We're going to make sure that operation mode starts in track. And the first step is to make sure that whatever is moving in the frame, we are tracking and finding first. I typically find that for the tracker pattern, I like to use the hybrid point area. For motion type, we're just going to pick translation. The reason we do that is we only want to know the X and Y movements. We don't want perspective. We don't want scale. We don't even want, you know, rotation. We just want to know in 2D space, where is this point, or in this case, my head, my head, where is it moving and why? And then for output and track channel, we can just leave. Next step, you wanna go over to your clip and just click on the video and draw a little box around what it is you want to track. For this one, this. once we have our box, we need to hit set, and then we go down here to track to end and once we hit that button we're going to see the magic start to happen davinci resolve is adding all of these green points while it is tracking and it is just tracking my face compared to what we were doing in final cut this is really fantastic i fully recognize that i'm a big fat nerd but i love watching the little green squiggly lines while it does this it's just fun once we've got that tracked part go over to the inspector and change the operation mode to stabilize. And now, as we click through the frames, we can see that Da Vinci is keeping my face in the middle of the video. Which is what we want. The only side effect that we don't love, which again we fixed with Final Cut by scaling, is that we have these checkered edges, right? We're, we're moving the clip in such a way that we're getting the edge essentially spilled over. There's obviously a couple of ways that you can fix this. You could go back to the edit page and scale it up. You could add a transform node and scale it up, but I just find to keep it simple, keep it all in one effect. We just want to go down now that we're in stabilize, go down to frame mode and hit crop and just hit scale and do X, Y offset if you want. Again, my face is looking pretty much where I want it. So I'm just going to scale this up until, you know, at the worst part, I don't have any edge bleed. I got a little carried away in this example, so we are scaling quite a bit. And then I'm just gonna go back to the edit page and let this render, make sure it looks good. Hit play and just like that, locked off TikTok dancing effect, check. And so now if someone comes to you and says, hey, I need an editor and I do TikTok dance videos, you say, I use DaVinci Resolve, I gotcha. Well guys, that's it. Hope you guys liked this video. If you did, make sure to hit subscribe so that you can you know, not miss the next one and leave a like, I sure would appreciate it. And if you really, really like me or this content and you wanna support it and you want it to keep you know, thriving on YouTube, uh, consider becoming a member. And to those of you who already are members, thank you. All right guys, I am uh, gonna get back to editing, so catch you in the next one.